Pond. George, this is a massive deal worth basically a billion dollars a year. Uh, they've changed the game by spreading this out among, among many networks now. And I'm curious how you think this changes sports rights. I mean, is this, is this sort of a, a seismic change that now never goes back in uh, the toothpaste is out of the tube kind of situation? Well, it, a couple things, Andrew. One, it's a massive deal for a, a college conference, right? It's significantly more than the National Hockey League on its own almost two times that of the National Hockey League. And when you aggregate the value of the rights of college sports, it's on par with the NBA, which is amazing because the pro leagues have single sellers and college has six different people selling a fragmented uh, set of rights. So what it means is college sports as content is enormously valuable. And then the second thing, I think the Big Ten is a big winner here. Why? Because they're going to get the promotional clout of Viacom um, Com Comcast and, and News Corp in a way that has never been applied to college sports before. They're on network television from noon on Saturday to midnight on Saturday with great promotion, great production qualities. It's definitely a game changer for the Big Ten and its member schools. So, George, how much pressure is this going to put on the NCAA to pay the players? I mean, we've been having this debate now for so long. But when you start to see these eye-popping numbers, and they've always been eye-popping, but now they're even outsized, does this change that? Does that change this conversation all over again? Well, I just think it puts more light on it. I think, unfortunately, what's happened here, the last Supreme Court ruling was pretty clear that I think eventually, in the next five to ten years, the players will have to, to share in the gate revenue and the media revenue. I think it's only a matter of time. And the question will be, will this be led by the courts? Will be, this be led by the industry, or does a governmental uh, uh, regulatory function take hold here? Because right now you have this multi-billion-dollar industry affecting people all over the country, kind of uh, because of, because of the fragmented nature, kind of floating out in the atmosphere. And you know, the NIL was led by the courts, and I just hope that the courts don't lead the way here uh, on the future structure of college athletics. So who is going to lead the way? I mean, can you can you imagine a day where the NCAA basically says, you know what, for the last 50 years we've been arguing this point, but actually we've decided to change our minds? Yeah, well, when, and when I look at the NCAA, Andrew, you know, it's a member institution with three divisions. And so I think it's kind of an antiquated model. I think that it's really there's a small set of schools, probably 65 or so, that have certain sets of issues that are quite different than 300 schools. And so I think it's very hard for the, the, the NCAA just represents its members. And I think it's right. very, been very difficult for the members to come together and have a shared vision. And that's why you take the NIL. It was led by the courts. It wasn't led by the NCAA. It wasn't led by the conferences. It wasn't led by the universities. So it's a fragmented. Right. right. But what does this mean? And, and to the degree it matters, what does this mean for the smaller schools that are part of the NCAA? What does it mean for the non-revenue sports at those well, schools. It's, it's a big issue, Andrew. What people have to come to grips with is college football and some basketball, but primarily football, underwrites football. Olympic, sport, Olympic sports. So if you take, if you pay the players, what happens to the funding of those Olympic, Olympic sports? What happens to Title IX? What, it, it's going to disrupt the entire ecosystem within college athletics. And that's why this is better led from within the industry, or if needed, much like the Super League, but by government, by the government. Somebody has to step in here and take hold and take control and organize this for the good of the game and the good of the student athlete. But who is going to? That's what I'm asking. If it's not the government, who's going to do it? Is the government? I mean, we talked. You talked. You mentioned the Super League. Government got involved, right? Correct. I mean, I think at some point, you know, is this where, where you're going right now? is an outcome led by the courts, further consolidation. I and mean, we saw Gavin Newsom speak about why is UCLA going into the Big Ten. That's really the first American politician to speak up. So I think the question is, is this going to be led from the industry or the courts? Obviously, it'd be better by the industry. And the middle of the road w would be the government. You see, I don't know if you saw, there's an article in the LA Times saying that the Regents Board in California thinks that they might actually be able to have authority over whether UCLA joins or not. Right. It's, I mean, it's a fair question. Is what, what, what does that mean to all the other schools in California? I mean, there's, there's much more to this than just, hey, I can get a few more dollars for a football contract. But, of course, in fairness to USC and UCLA, they don't want to be left out 
in a consolidation game. And that's why there needs to be somebody that can take the lead here and see the whole right. view from, uh, for the entire industry. Right well, now, let me, make it let me make it complicated for you, George. All the folks in the media business, including, by the way, NBC, parent company Comcast, owns, owns this network as well. What's the role of media companies to the degree you think there is a role in this very debate? Well, I think the media companies right now are doing what's best for their shareholders. And so they're trying to balance the interests of their shareholders with the interests of the people they're aligned with. And so if I'm a media company aligned with one network, you know, I'm not really as concerned about the other, other conferences. So, you know, when you have a fragmented industry, big stakeholders have a bigger role than perhaps they would in a, in a consolidated industry. And that's why consolidated leadership uh, would be best here for the industry.